To explore the reef, visitors can journey by sea or go by fast air services. This is typical of a scenic beauty through the famous Whit Sunday Passage. Most of tropical islands are very picturesque and handy to the mainland. Here, in ideal surroundings, tourists come to laze, gaze, and fish. The accommodation is of a high standard, and modern amenities are provided for guests. Some prefer to spend their time just sunbaking and swimming, where the sun is warm and invigorating. Yes, the Great Barrier Reef has a distinctive charm of its own and many other sights you'll see. But let's go for a swim and enjoy the exhilarating blue-green water of the Pacific which laps the white coral beaches. And for thrills, there are water sports. But what most tourists desire to see is the colourful life of the reef. Low tide exposes beauty beyond description. The delicate tints of the coral and brilliant hues of the fish are fascinating. Tiny polyps are responsible for the coral in infinite variety. The real flowers of the barrier reef are the sea anemones. Their appearance closely resembles the beautiful blooms of the chrysanthemum or dahlia in all their colour and charm. Anemone tentacles wave like dainty petals to attack their prey, which is paralysed by the stinging cells. Another great camouflage is the spider crab, master in makeup. He plants seaweed and sponge on his back to deceive small fish and hide from his enemies. And the coral crab has giant claws to protect his body against the octopus. Small sardine-type fish feed around the coral pool and when approached, dart quickly under the coral. The visitor sees delicate coral gardens in limitless variety and colour. The pattern on this coral, which resembles the human brain, is formed by sea urchins and erosion. But the slender and fragile staghorn types dominate the reef in pinks, blues, lavenders, yellows, purples, greens, and combinations of all the colors of the rainbow. The tips of the branches form a beautiful contrast with shades as delicate as flowers. Other corals resemble dying trees. Giant sea oysters abound on the barrier reef and grow to a weight of seven pounds, the world's largest. And an Aboriginal shows how to eat them. Moving still northward, we call it South Mole Island, where we plan to go fishing in earth. To pick up supplies, we also visit Hayman Island. On the way to the reef, we see many surface fish, a devil ray, mackerel, or perhaps a whale. Great sport for the angler is provided by the bluefin tuna, yellowtail kingfish, marlin, and giant trevally. The queenfish and Spanish mackerel are the main fighting fish on the reef for game fishermen. Reef fish in an array of colours are easily caught. Bright green, blue, multicolour, and pink and red beauties like this emperor. The Queensland groper is a veritable giant, reaching a weight of six to seven hundred pounds. A relative, the rock cod, like this one, grows to over one hundred pounds. Therefore, the angler is well catered for on the barrier reef. King snapper, coral cod, trout, sweet lip, and many others, a fair catch indeed. There's another fantastic world beneath the surface of the sea, and we prepare to explore the depths with a specially fitted camera. Deep down we go, and deeper still. 
where the light fades, and we see only the dim outlines of the many types of fish and marine growth around us. Yes, we are on our own now. No city noises, no telephones, an eerie atmosphere, but fascinating and breathtaking in its beauty. We wonder at the fish in this strange, silent world. Quaint stick fish that hardly move their tails are evidently not frightened by our presence. The reef fish swim around the encrusting corals in settings of colourful seaweed. And the scarlet anemone fish lures other marine life to the anemone's stinging tentacles. All kinds of fish swim lazily about the many species of corals for which there are hundreds. Their colours are indescribable. Some have golden tails, while others are in pastel shades as if specially painted for the occasion. How wonderful to be in our garden of dreams. When you go fishing, you wonder what's happening at the other end of your life. It's like this. Some fish are just not interested, others are. Our old friend the Moses Perch is there for his share. Wherever we look, we're astounded by the variety of coral, fish and marine growth, which provide a kaleidoscopic background, a fantasy in colour. Living in the sea are some of the most delicate and amazingly beautiful creatures in the animal kingdom. Perhaps one of the most intriguing and fascinating is the famous sea horse, found on rare occasions by the tourist and beach lover among the seaweed. Australian seahorses are somewhat different to those in other parts of the world, but they nevertheless are symbolic of the age-long mystery of the sea. We were indeed fortunate in securing these colour photographs of a live seahorse in its natural surroundings on the reef. It floats with the current and snaps at passing microscopic marine life. Among the most colourful animals on the reef are the swimming nudibranchs, or sea slugs, which convey the impression of a graceful ballet dancer or magic carpet. There are many varieties, some purple, some red and yellow fringed with white. This variety of sea slug feeds its food from the anemones, whose singing batteries apparently have no effect on it. Sea urchins are prolific on the barrier reef. They are a relative of the starfish, which incidentally is its main enemy. Needle-sharp spines give it both protection and motive power. Sea urchins burrow into the sand or coral for shelter. A big fish passes close by as we prepare to surface. And these strange lungfish, like a submarine, can stay on the seabed at will. A large school of curious trevally come right up to the camera. A fisherman's dream come true. One of the features of the Great Barrier Reef are the turtles. The turtles come ashore in summer during the months of October and January to lay their eggs. After a slow and laborious effort up the beach, she excavates a spot well above high tide. There she deposits about 100 eggs, which are white and spherical. The egg laying completed, the turtle shovels the sand back with her hind flippers and sprays the depression with fine sand with her fore flippers to make the nest unrecognisable by man or seabirds such as the hawk and turn. The task completed, the turtle makes back to the sea almost exhausted because after the egg laying, as the fully grown green turtle is about 500 pounds, she has a job pushing through the soft ground. The shark is the turtle's main enemy, and often turtles are found with their tails and flippers missing. The newly hatched turtles, after breaking the egg shell, measure about three inches in length. 
They crawl down to the water's edge, but only about 10% ever live, as the seabirds and large sand crabs reap a rich harvest. Another interesting and strange reef creature is this mermaid, the dugong. It's a mammal and grows to a length of about nine feet and may weigh up to half a ton. The baby dugong is hugged to the mother with its flippers. Along the shallow foreshores, the giant sawfish is caught. It grows to over 20 feet in length and its long snout is armed with very strong, sharp spikes. Large sharks also provide the game fishermen with plenty of thrilling sport. The wonders of the Great Barrier Reef are not only confined to below the sea, for birds and their millions gather on the beaches. Terns, mutton birds, torres strait pigeons, silver gulls, reef herons, sea eagles and frigate birds are but some of the fascinating seabirds that live on the small surface fish that abound on the sunlit waters of the Great Barrier Reef. The beige de mer, or sea worm, spreads white threads to confuse its enemies when disturbed. These sea slugs are found in many colours among the coral pools and on the sand flats. Another variety of sea snail ejects colour liquid like an octopus to blind its enemies. These animals can regenerate lost portions of their body, particularly their internal organs. This giant clam is the largest shellfish in the world. When touched, the clam withdraws its mantle, sometimes slowly, sometimes rapidly. The shell is pulled together by an enormous muscle, and it would need a crowbar to open the shell if your foot became accidentally caught in it. The mantles of the smaller clams are rich in colour. Bright purple, greens and blues mingle with browns, fawns and greys in limitless combinations. Nature's handiwork at its best. The clam feeds on microscopic life, but grows its own vegetable garden. Tiny polyps are the architects responsible for the beautiful corals of the barrier reef. The soft and solid corals breathe and obtain their oxygen from the sea water. In the coral pools, the long needle-spined sea urchins are like jewels on velvet. We gasp with wonder at the magnificence of the coral gardens and their blaze of colour, and designs so strangely different and so delicate, like rare flowers and shrubs. Again we see corals and hues of red, pink, lavender, bright blue and other colours like buds about to burst into bloom. Through a glass bottom box or boat, the coral garden and fish may be seen more clearly. Highly decorative patterns are formed on some of the harder corals, artistic, futuristic. Branching coral in all dainty colours reminds us of the wonders of nature in giving such colour and design to this enchanted region. Alcyonarian corals are soft because they do not secrete lime. The life of coral, like everything else in the reef, is a struggle for existence. It is ever growing and flourishing, upwards extending its area. The long succession of gardens decorates the whole area of the reef with their beauty and fantastic colouring. But the action of sea, wind and marine life causes many coral graves. With the colour camera, some of the wonderful life of the Great Barrier Reef of Queensland, Australia has been captured, but it would be impossible to portray in such a short story a full and descriptive outline of surely what must be the eighth wonder of the world. Like the sea, man is restless and is forever seeking knowledge, excitement and romance. And he can find all these things around the Great Barrier Reef where the scenery and climate is unexcelled anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm.